Hey guys, Happy Kappa here, and I'm back, and uh, I thought today we should talk a bit about uh, Dead Man's Curve, uh, also known as the HV diagrams, um, or shown in the HV diagrams. Um, so what we're looking at here is uh, the AS350P3 Plus's HV diagram, and this basically shows the safe altitude at, um, at the specific speeds. Now this is um, this is kind of meant as a guideline to um, within what parameters it is secure and safe to make an auto rotation. Um, so this is why helicopters take off uh, often in the fashion that you see them do, kind of like an airplane, where they uh, gather speed at low uh, altitude, and then when they have some speed, they um, they puff up and start getting altitude. Um, and that's simply due to the um, safety of the case of an auto rotation uh, or an engine failure where you would uh, need to auto rotate. Um, so I'll really show, um, if you're not familiar with these, um, this simply just shows uh, this kind of dotted area, that's where you don't want to be. So if you're at 20 knots, let's say, you don't want to be above um, this height. That height refers to probably about um, 10, 15 feet, um, 100 feet, 200 feet. Um, so if you're 20 knots, you want to be either at 350 feet and above, or you want to be below about 15 feet. Um, so your profile for taking off when you can, when able, is going to be gaining speed, gaining speed, gaining speed, and slowly you can you know start gaining a little bit of altitude. When you reach 50 knots, you can start... Um, ascending, reach, uh, or sorry, when you reach 40 knots, you can start ascending a bit, and uh, reaching 50 knots, you're clear to do uh, pretty much whatever you want, you're going to be uh, in the safe. Some HV diagrams you might see have another small um, outline down here that you don't want to be in, but generally speaking, they're about, you know, below 20 feet, you don't want to be operating uh, at too fast speeds. And um, but in the AS350, it's not too big of a deal because it has uh, a lot of power and a big rotor diameter, a big rotor area, so um, it's going to be able to pop up and still enter the flare. Um, so not really, not really too big of a problem. Um, so if you're flying at zero airspeed uh, and you're just hovering, uh, you'd either be doing it in ground effect, really close to the ground, or you'd be doing it above 500 feet. Uh, and that's because to make a safe auto rotation, you need to be able to make a flare at the end of the auto rotation, and that to make a safe flare to a safe landing, you need to have about at least 50 knots of airspeed when you get down to the ground. And uh, 50 knots of airspeed can be achieved at 500 feet if you uh, nose forward. Uh, you can gain 50 knots of airspeed uh, by the time you're within the area where you need to uh, to make a flare. So with that out of the way, let's uh, jump in game and I'll uh, show you a couple of different examples of uh, what safe um, profile and landing looks like and then uh, what an unsafe, uh, potentially hazardous uh, operation could be. Alright guys, so we're back here in the sim, helicopter is uh, all set up, and um, and we'll head out. So um, we'll do a departure from the ramp today, and uh, we'll try and do uh, demonstrate a safe departure. Because um, a lot of the time you see helicopters depart from the ramp, which is uh, obviously quite smart uh, when it comes to uh, one, not having them take up taxiways and runways, and two, having time saved. Um, but it's important to make sure that it can be a, a safe departure. So uh, don't try and rush it, and don't try and uh, and uh, do it without the HP diagram, because there's no need to it. Now, of course, if you're doing confined area landings, if you're doing training in that, if you're doing max performance takeoffs, um, there's things you're going to need, and there's things that you, yeah, you'll need to train and you'll need to actually do. Um, so don't don't feel um, obligated to to always stay within the safe 
areas of the HP uh, chart, um, you'll have to, to sometimes go without it. And uh, as long as you stay uh, safe within 90 to 95 percent of the time, it, it really shouldn't be an issue. But if you can avoid it, um, go ahead. But you know, um, yeah, no need to put yourself into unnecessary risk. But we'll do a departure here. Uh, so say we've been we've been cleared. We'll just uh, wait for these vehicles to get out of the way. Uh, seems that that okay. Yeah, I thought that truck was going to head directly towards us. Um, I think we'll head over here and depart out um, this way. Um, but as we're hovering quite low, we're just staying within ground effect, staying you know very few feet above the ground, and um, and then we'll get going. So if you just keep the power in from your um, ground effect hover, you can easily gain airspeed, gain transitional lift, and you can keep that altitude down low. You can start pulling in collective, keep that nose down, 50 knots, start easing back, 60 knots, and you're you're clear to uh, climb to any altitude of your liking. All right, so uh, we'll uh, get up here, start getting up to some uh, safe distance. Um, now, if you operate within the um, kind of marginal safe areas on the um, on the HV chart, if you operate just within the edge, you want to make sure that you always have a clear spot that you have picked out and that you know you can reach. Because even if you, you know, the HV chart doesn't take a, account of how easy it's going to be to find a spot to land. It just takes account if you're going to be able to uh, safely perform an auto rotation with the flare um, and and uh, and that's really all it shows so if you're flying in mountainous area or in very wooden area you might want to fly at a bit higher altitude just to make sure that you can uh, safely perform an auto rotation and find a spot um, within you know the the needed time because if you if you um stay on the margin of of what's safe then you're not going to be able to glide very far and you're not going to be able to glide to a spot if it's very woodenness you might be able to uh, you might not be able to to find a spot um at low altitudes so um so yeah but i'll uh, set up a failure here and then we'll uh, um get into some uh, marginal uh, kind of uh, almost dangerous situations and see how well uh, it can be handled, kind of demonstrate that. So I'll be uh, right back when uh, we get that set up. Alright, so engine is set up to be able to fail at any time now. So uh, we'll just uh, get down to some low altitudes and, uh, and see how that's going to go. Now this is obviously quite a uh, densely populated area. We do have both of photos, so uh, we see some buildings that aren't actually there painted on the map but that's not too bad um so we'll come down and we'll fly kind of low here and uh, see how it goes if uh, if we get any problems all right so there we go engine cut out then so collective is coming down and um got an obvious spot straight ahead of us but it is a uh, a bit close, so we're gonna make a couple of turns here, just to uh, just to make it not get too far, um, and we'll flare, flare, keep the flare coming, and then we'll uh, soften the touchdown, collective, and on the ground. Sweet. So that wasn't so bad. We um, were, I think, at about 300 feet AGL, and um, and we had quite a bit of speed. We had uh, a lot of, of speed, so uh, um, when coming in, I made the choice to make a, a couple of turns just to get rid of a bit of that speed to make sure that we didn't go too far. Um, and then we uh, we just came in, flared, and set it down. Um, quite an obvious spot, though. Uh, it was uh, quite easy to make it out, and it was uh, something uh, I know is here. So, um, so obviously, first choice to go for. Um, but I thought... I, uh, I'd like to demonstrate kind of operating um, somewhere where you have a lot of speed, but you might be really close to the ground. So maybe flying at 
maybe 20 feet 10 feet uh, by having a lot of airspeed how how you can uh, how you can safely land the helicopter that speed so i think i'll uh, get this helicopter going again and then we'll come over to the uh, airfield do a low pass over the uh, airfield over the runway and then um, we'll make the um we'll make the the engine failure happen at about uh say uh, 90 knots of airspeed uh, so I'll set that up in the editor and uh, uh, or in the in the simulator, and then we'll head over the uh, the runway. All right. So engine failure is set up to happen when I reach 90 knots. So uh, I'm just going to make sure to stay below 90 knots. Um, getting a bit close then. Um, but uh, doing these kind of low level, high speed flights, they can be safe enough. But you only want to do them if you have a clear spot that you know you're going to be able to make. And it can be sometimes be difficult to have that. Um, you want to have it really close as well. So you only really want to be doing this over uh, over fields, open fields, uh, stuff like that. But we'll come in and uh, I'll demonstrate. I'll get up some speed when we get over the runway. Now the important thing is here, if you're so low that your tail is going to strike the ground when you start flaring. You want to keep the collective in a little bit so that you can gain a little bit of altitude and then you can start your flare. So coming in here, just want to keep not too fast until we get over there, over the runway. But I'll start feeding in some speed now. Speed's coming up. Okay, there goes the engine. Collective comes up and, uh, and we start the flare here. Try to an altitude and uh, soften up the landing with the collective and slowly slide along the runway. All right, so that all happened a bit fast. Important thing is uh, to make sure you don't hit the tail and to make sure that you can complete your flare safely, you want to have a little bit of altitude. You want to kind of gain altitude, use the collective that you have, use the power that you have available to gain altitude um, up to where you would start your flare normally. Then you can start your flare lower the collective while you're in the flare. Your airspeed uh, is going to go down, but your rotor RPM is going to come up. Even if your rotor RPM goes low when you're using that collective to get the altitude, your rotor RPM is going to spike up when you start the flare, and you're going to have plenty of energy in the rotors to be able to perform the landing safely. Um, but again, this is really um, only safe if you have the spot picked out first, if you have the spot um, in front of you. And if you are very aware of the kind of dangers, um, so over a field, um, over a runway, um, something like that is going to be fine. Uh, but if you're doing it over trees, you know, you're going to end up in the trees and, and, and that's at least going to damage the helicopter really badly. And it can, uh, of course, still uh, be quite hazardous to anybody on board the helicopter. So, so. Uh, make sure that you do these kind of low-level, uh, high airspeed maneuvers at uh, at safe um, at safe spots over a field. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you uh, you learned something. And I hope you um, you can can use this. And uh, until the next video, guys, take care.